Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We're getting ready to have another conversation with another amazing birth worker. Let's see if I can get her in the room. Hi. How are you? Hello. Oh my gosh, Katia. Hi, love. How those boys? How you doing? Thanks for that last video with the twins <laughs> pushing each other. That was great. Okay, let's see if I can invite Mama. Let's see. I just invited her. How am I? I'm okay. I actually just um, finished connecting with uh, a midwife of, about our mama who's in labor right now. Yes, I have to have a labor, a mama in labor. So I'm just watching it and doing what I need to do. I'm well rested from you know last night and yesterday. It's been a busy week, a busy birth week. It's baby season. Okay, where is Torah? Sacred Dula. Hi. Stardust Lakes. Oh, that sounds amazing. So we're just going to, to um, drop in around, you know, we're celebrating World Dula Week. And I had this idea in the middle of a birth, sitting on the floor, waiting for Mama to come out and so I could say goodbye to her. Um, Oh no, why is she unable to join? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I wonder why. Oh dear. Oh, maybe she's maybe she's private. Okay, I'm going to send her a text. Oh, she's texting me now, so. <laughs> Hi, you had a busy birth week? It's crazy, right? Are yours jumping queue? Are the, the ones who aren't due late until later coming earlier? That's what's happening to me. It's just kind of everybody's doing that kind of a thing. Babies, babies, babies this month. For real. For real, ancestral seed. <sighs> we know it's, it's going to be more so, but I think I'm going to have time for, oh, there she is. I'm going to have time for myself <laughs> because all my April clients are coming out. There she is. Well, hello, lovely. Yeah, <laughs> Where's your Instagram private? Is that why you couldn't get on? It's not private. It, I don't know what's going on with my Instagram, so it's just weird. Look, mine has been weird. Mm -hmm. It just decided to start working yesterday because ever since I was hacked, it's just been. Oh, um, no. It, yeah, it's crazy. You look gorgeous. Oh, you look great. Thank you. So do you. It's good to Thank see you. you. Well, I try. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to to have you here because you know we're celebrating World Doula Week, and what your mission is, like what you got out of your training, mm -hmm. I feel is going to be so important in supporting the people where you live. Okay. Like it's crucial. I think it's crucial because you're right. They end up by themselves. Tell everybody who you are. Tell everybody your business name, where you live, all the things. <laughs> okay. First show, hello. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Tori Jimerson. I live in Southern California, uh, San Marcos, just right outside of San Diego. Um, I'm still working on my doula name, but I think I got it narrowed down. It's um, going to be I am, I am mother doula service and uh, that's brilliant <laughs> <laughs> um, that is the great I, the i am is an acronym and i'm still gonna work on that i'm saving that for the end but um all right i definitely want to tie it into what my uh plan is my end goal is and my end goal is to work with service members um i know that a lot of times that there are a lot of um, families that are um, separated due to deployments, mm -hmm. um, long contracts someplace else, sometimes single mothers in the military. So I want to provide a service for them having served myself and experienced it myself. 
I yeah. want to be a father to them. That is so amazing. When you said that in class, I was just like, oh, my <laughs> gosh, that's so brilliant. Um, because, you know, I, I'm an Air Force brat, and I do know that for some of the, the wives, it's very isolating. Right. They don't have support. They only have one way of having a baby. It's just right. like, so you're going to actually change the game for them down there by San Diego um, and all the, the people there. I'm so excited for you. I am too. I hope so. I'm looking forward to just getting it off the ground and starting running. Oh, good. It. Oh, Sacred Doula is from San Diego. So that's, you know, to connect, honey. She might know some people down there for you to, <laughs> to do. But um, what is it that you feel that you're going to be able to provide for, like, uh, a family who, whose partner is deployed? And what, what does that look like for you? What would your business be? Would you be escorting them to their doctor's appointments? What, what does it mean? I'd like to be as full service as I can. I mm -hmm. want to be not just the doula, but a companion in the sense of um, them not having their companion there. I would facilitate that emotional support, mm -hmm. um, be there for the walks, be there for the talks. Um, yes. You know, if they're too tired to go get a meal and they, they need to get something to eat, you know, be there to help do that. Um, That's wonderful. So you're going to be more like a birth coach prep doula Correct. also being there for the labor too of course absolutely. but you can you're going to be able to support all the way through i love that absolutely that absolutely. is so good because I, I know that excuse me um a lot of uh, military families like when they're separated from one another um usually it's the mom that's obviously she's by herself but she's separated from her family oh you know? so who does she have? You know, yes, she has military friends and, you know, they meet other, you know, military families, but a lot of the time they're alone. They're, you know, their parents are a phone call away, states yeah. away. So if I can provide a friendship along with that, then that's what I want to do. I love that. I can see that really thriving and really um, creating space. And I, I would think a lot of healing. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Know, healing I know around... When I, um, their Sorry. isolation. When yeah. I had my son, I I had family, but my family was far away too. Mm -hmm. And um, after taking your course, I really thought about it. I wish I had that um, doula. I wish I had someone that could walk me through, you know, mm -hmm. every step of what was to be expected, even for the things that um, I wasn't truly prepared for. Because you never, you can only be so prepared for childbirth. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you're never right? You're never truly prepared. But wow, I mean, um, taking your class, I learned so much. And, you know, I want to be able to give that to someone else who doesn't have someone close by. Yeah, I think it's also about giving them the courage to speak up, to own, I mean, because the military, I do remember people trying not to make waves. Right. I remember that. And so what tends to happen is that they lose their voice. They lose their ability to stand up for themselves, to speak up for themselves, to ask questions. And I think and feel that if you are able to provide that space and support, that people will drop into that more and you you know their their healing from it will be different. How did do, how does it work postpartum wise for a military Mom. So they, you know, so same for us, like if civilians, right, mm -hmm. you know, they get their time off, you know, you give your paternity and maternity time off. But when I was in, you only got six weeks and then you're back to work. Now, I don't know if that's changed since I've been um, out of the Marine Corps, but it was six weeks and then you were right back to work with a brand new baby. Hold on. Hold on. Six weeks, even if it was a cesarean? As far as I know. But that was, you know, I got out and that's probably changed a lot since then. I'm hoping it has. I'm hoping that they've been given a lot more time since then. You know what I mean? Because six Whoa. weeks is not much time. It's not mm -mm. time to really bond. It's not, you know, really yeah, time I to get your body back to, you know, normal. It's 
you know, and then it's the military. So you're right back into running, you're right back into training, you know, after a certain amount of time, you know, after a certain amount of time, Mama Hayes, it's not like immediate. They do give you What is a certain amount of time? Because all I'm thinking is prolapse. I, all I'm hearing is no. PT. All I'm hearing <laughs> is pelvic floor. Like, right. No, I'm. it's after, like, you have like six months, I think, total healing oh. time. Right. Okay. Right. But you still, after a while, you do have to get back to regular training schedules. And so, yeah. Ooh. So it seems that you would be able to provide, now you tell me if I'm misunderstanding, you would be able to provide a safe place mentally for postpartum as well as the physical aspect of it. Absolutely. So what if, what, what if that mom comes through the other side of her birth and everything looks great on the outside, but on the inside, there needs to be a little bit more integrating or a little bit more um, healing time? Like what? So, you know, I, I, I plan, I prepare to stay as long as they need me, you know, as long as I'm needed and as long as they need me, I'm mm -hmm. prepared to. Do That's that and beautiful. The service as long as they want. Okay. See, this is going to be so great. And you know what else you could do with this? Okay. Here comes the birth. Your coach, your mentor, talking. <laughs> <laughs> when you're ready, right? Yes. Also, you know, you teaching childbirth education class for them. So Absolutely. teaching them to be prepared to have ownership in their birth, even if it's a military hospital, you know what I Absolutely. mean? Like that Absolutely. is another avenue. You could do um, coaching, preparation. You could do, you know, seminars or classes on postpartum, mm -hmm. the truth about it, like what's really important, you know? Absolutely. And I wanted to say this, you know, I, you know, I can't see anybody or everybody that's on, but maybe there are other military um, women who can relate or understand. And I know when I was in the Marine Corps, it's tough to tap into that feminine side of your, yourself. You know, yeah. um, we have to be, if not as strong, stronger, stronger than our male counterparts. And so when you're pregnant, you know, and wanting to, you know, be that soft touch for your baby. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to find that feminine side of yourself when you're so trained to be, you know, tough. Yeah, that that was going to be my next question to ask you. How is it navigating the 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 balance of the masculine feminine with you know? Because we know that's true that we all Absolutely. walk around with the masculine feminine, and what happens in birth is that those aspects come up more prevalently than you know in any other space and place between partner and birthing person you know right. like it's so being able to navigate that and making it be okay and not judging it like i would imagine that that is where your work is going to begin right with them i mean i know right. i mean you can totally do it the way i, I you know, trained you guys, mm -hmm. but this is a different circumstance. So you're going to have to like really create the space for yes. them to allow for that feeling of fragility, but strength, yes. that Absolutely. softness, yes. but courage, right? Yes. Yes. It's and like I think that's where the duality. friendship part, the friendship creating, that friendship mm -hmm. comes in because without a friendship, how do you allow yourself to be vulnerable with somebody if you don't feel safe with that person? I, I definitely want, you know, any future clients to feel safe with me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When I'm safe with you, I can be myself with you. When I'm safe with you, I can be my feminine self with you, right? So. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you this. Yes. What if it's the first time they're actually tapping into that space and place? That is, you know, I think at that point, then I just allow it to manifest itself as it's supposed mm -hmm. to you just keep I mean? having the conversations and, and right so I, I would think that that would mean kind of uh dropping into emotional conversations mm -hmm. to to conversations about feelings things like yes. that and yes. Jean marie hi honey um you know just really allowing them because sometimes they're not even they're not aware of it because they're never allowed that space yeah 
to where they can open up and talk. I'm actually yeah. in the process of um, doing a life coach certification as well. <laughs> so I want it. I'm trying to be as full service as I can. I learned so much from you. And I just want to be as full service as I can, because sometimes even after the birth, you know, you still need somebody. Yeah. Maybe there's something else that I know when I had my son, it was hard for me to nurse him. I couldn't nurse him. Mm. There was a blockage there, not mm. a physical blockage. There was a mental blockage. A mental block. I couldn't relax enough. I couldn't. And um, I had a friend come and pick me up and take me to church. And she said, you know, Tori, I want you to come and sit in the office with me. I'm going to have the pastor pray for you. And then let's see what happens. So he prayed for me. Mm -hmm. And at that time, my son woke up and he was hungry. He was able to latch on. And that was the first time I was able to nurse him with no problems. No, wow. And I just really needed that support. And I think it's important for mothers military mothers non-military mothers to have that extra support yeah we all need um support and that support can look different ways some of us need support you know facilitating the life uh, right right so that mama can just heal mm -hmm. and relearn herself <laughs> right Absolutely. and then some of us need more just emotional conversation and holding yes. So I guess we all have the things that we need and you doing this work is going to actually allow them to excavate the stuff that they no longer want and be able to say, mm -hmm. okay, this is how you can support me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, yeah. because sometimes they don't even know how they can, how, right. you know, what they need. Not until you're in it, right? You don't know what you need until the circumstances mm -hmm. right in front of your face, right? So yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah. I always, I always love, you know, that first meeting after the birth. Yes. To have it be, you know, absolutely transparent mm -hmm. and completely, you know, um, honest to ask them how they feel about their birth. And I learned that early on because what I thought was really traumatizing in a birth, my client loved it. And she thought it was powerful and amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. you know, <laughs> first few births, I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but she was thrilled. She felt powerful. She thought it was incredible and right. such a happy experience. And then there's other times where it's the reverse where right. you know i'm like oh man that was so beautiful you did great mama you owned it oh my gosh mm -hmm. and then she starts bawling right you know these were some of my early you know <laughs> mistakes just coming in and telling somebody their experience without inquiring about it first like how did it right. feel for you how did you feel about your birth what was the thing that stood out the most you know right. Um, I, I think it's important to find out, and this may be a strange one, Mama Hayes, but I think it's important to find out, like, what your client, what makes her feel feminine? What makes her want to open up? Because remember, we discussed when you're open, mm -hmm. it makes a better pathway for baby, right? Right. So what makes her feel soft? What makes yeah. her feel Juicy. like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can do this. I can get this baby out of here and mm -hmm. it would be an amazing experience for me and baby, right? Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to facilitate that as much as I can. Mm -hmm. You know, what mm -hmm. makes you feel feminine so that you can birth this beautiful baby? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And I also find that when I am speaking about what that feminine energy is, and all the ways that it does show up, although it might not look it, you right. know, and just, I don't know, sometimes it's just simply me saying, you have that absolutely alluring smile, like that, yeah. your smile breaks And sometimes hearts. that's everything, right? And sometimes that's everything, mm -hmm. just, and they smile again, and then it's, yeah. their whole body softens, right? Right, um, right. It doesn't necessarily have to be, we're not talking flirty energy. We're not mm -hmm. talking about women's wiles. That's not what we're saying. Right. We're, we're talking about that ability to be 
in the receptive mode and yeah. to be, you know, open hearted and compassionate for yourself as well as for other people. And I think that's the thing that's most beneficial in labor is to have them be really compassionate and kind to themselves because then that creates a softness and an openness for them to do the journey that is not judged. Right. You know, that they just get to be. Yeah. Yes. I think that's a beautiful gift that they can give to themselves. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah, I, I love that. <laughs> well, you know, it just just makes it all better. I mean, I love <laughs> to keep the room juicy because then you know, it's actually it's more fun. Yeah, yeah. If things can find it's juicy, right? Yeah, things, you know, things happen. Yeah, oh yeah. Exactly, exactly. I am not above a mama creating her own oxytocin. Right. If she doesn't want to use Pitocin, like, Absolutely. okay, girl, what you going to do? Yeah. What do we yeah. do? You know, <laughs> how are you going to bring on that oxytocin? How are you going to get that dopamine happening? You yes. know, um, and as long as she's good with it, it's perfect. Right. right? Um, and I do love when I've had these conversations with the couples and the mom just totally is expressive in her labor. She's very touchy feely for mm -hmm. her partner or her just herself. You know, right. she's got all the tools, all the toys, all the things that mm -hmm. she needs to Absolutely. to keep it. You know, she's got comedy playing, so she's laughing a lot. Like all the things, right? right? And the shift, her element, right? Yeah, and the shift that happens in the relatedness with the partner when they either return to, and meet their new child. Um, it just seems to be a, a bringing together of the souls that fell in love in the first place. Like it Absolutely. just makes it like more adhesive and more. Mm. Yeah, Hi, magic. Leanne. <laughs> magic. Hi. Yeah, magic, magic. Um, it, does anybody that's in the room have a question for Torah? Or a question for myself because we can totally. I know, I know Leanne. I went to school with Leanne. Did you? <laughs> yeah, we're like sisters. Oh, <laughs> yeah. wait, where, where did you go to school, Left? Oh, I went to school in the Bay Area. That's that's what I thought. I was like, why do I feel like she's up north? Yeah, so I moved out of Los Angeles at like uh, at thirteen, and then moved to the Bay Area and went to high school there. Graduated there, joined the Marine Corps after that. Wow! And how long were you in the Marine Corps? I did four years. You did? Wow. Hi, Celeste. You got to meet Celeste. Amazing. She's amazing. <laughs> amazing midwife. Um, so one of the other things that I wanted to drop in um, with you about is your, um, is your connection with that area that you live in. Like when mm -hmm. I first uh, spoke with you, in the um, training, one of the things you you mentioned to me was how you wanted your community to thrive. That you really believed in that the, what was happening there and the energy there, and that you felt like everyone has the right to this type of support and is not missing. It's missing there. Right. What other areas do you feel? would be beneficial for your community to to have like what are you what are some of the things that you feel are missing besides the support that you're you're getting ready to offer um besides the doula support um you know mama hayes i'm not sure i i know that um i didn't have a whole lot of outreach outside of the hospital support for lactation specialists oh right mm -hmm. um you know, and I think that's a service that, you know, there's so many moms that may want to nurse, but can't, you know, mm -hmm. um, or are having a tough time doing that. So that's a service that I think is important um, and should be provided. No, what I was also thinking was about um, the things that I would have wanted to have or needed after I had my son. After, uh, uh -huh. after I had my son, like um, pads for the swelling in your breast, right? or something for the lower area because it's swollen and it's, you know, things like that, like little um, intricate, you know, intimate things mm -hmm. um, that I think would benefit mom after baby is born, you know. Um, um, I know that the doula community, I know there's a doula community here, 
There's some um, good ones there. Yeah. Right. Especially in um, San, Diego, I, San Diego as well. Absolutely. I don't know, um, and I probably need to do a little bit more research for this, but um, how many of them are um, black owned or um, ran by black midwives or mm -hmm. um, doulas, but I think that's something that's missing in this community too. Um, more black or African-American doulas that can mm -hmm. support more African-American and Hispanic women. Communities, yeah. So, I mean, it should, the community should look like the bases themselves and right. the bases themselves is highly diverse then that's what the support should look like too you know absolutely i feel very strongly about that um we have a question from one of my really dear dear friends and sisters in all things healing and ceremony um sacred she says what are some of the grounding exercises that work for you for me grounding mm -hmm. exercises mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> as far as with the mother or just personally for myself? I would think both. Right. So grounding mm -hmm. exercises, um, um, since this is still fairly new for me, um, I would work on breath work for one. Um, I think it's important when you can breathe and kind of um, come back to self, because I know that a lot of the times when you're in the middle of having baby and, you know, it can get a little intense, but if you can breathe and kind of bring back to center yeah. and just really focus on yourself, breathing is very important. Um, I don't think it's necessary for a lot of women to control that, you know, you want to scream, you want to, I think it's important to let that out. Yeah, be primal. Yeah. Don't be <laughs> you know, let it out, you know. Um, be yourself, yeah. Be yourself. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, kind of ask for that extra support when you need it. You know, I need someone to come and rub my back, someone rub to my come feet. and hold my hand, rub my feet. You know, um, I hope that's kind of answering the question. Yeah, no, know, that's I'm good. Still, that's good. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm still learning and yeah. um, I definitely want to be able to give as much as I can, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of the things I like to do um, is take my clients in nature. What I used to bring my clients mm -hmm. to my backyard before they mm -hmm. actually cut it yeah. down, dug it up. It. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would bring them to nature, <laughs> you know, and, um, and have them, you know, lay on the grass and, yeah. and feel the heartbeat, the rhythm of the, of the planet and, and just stay there till it starts sinking up like and one. breathing with yeah. the, cause the, the leaves and the trees, I mean, you can just get right in there. And when they do that, there seems to be a connection with the self again in a deeper way. Because once you see that everything is related and we're all interconnected and, you know, all of it is, nice. it becomes, you know, a more um, embodied process. That's the word I'm looking for. Embodied process. Mm -hmm. And they can really take ownership for it. And I, I think it's really powerful. I think it helps a lot it helps them prepare because you know we know they have to prepare they're not all they're gonna all of a sudden gonna show up in this right. birth the you know all magical and amazing you gotta mm -hmm. practice it right yes you, you really do and so if you want to practice being centered being calm if you want to practice mindfulness you do it ahead of time so that mm -hmm. you're ready for the birth process absolutely right absolutely. i um yeah i've seen like amazing practices like everybody brings their own gifts and if i can learn something from somebody else then i want to use that too <laughs> you know right. absolutely nobody Especially if it anything. works right <laughs> exactly <laughs> if it works. Um, questions about home births in the city of boston oh what what kind of question i might not know it each state is very different in what they allow some states home birth is illegal. Some states, midwifery is illegal. Um, so it, it would, it just depends. Like DM you? Okay, sure, well, <laughs> let me write your little hand, your handle down so I remember it. It might not be today because like I said, I have a birth that I might have to go to, but I will DM you. And maybe if somebody else is on here, they can answer that. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that um, I really wanted to provide in the training was a community for you guys, which is why I love mm -hmm. that you and Kayla. You I guys, think she's amazing. I love Kayla. I do too. I love her. She's really, she's a little 
powerful mama. She really is. Um, and I love that you got that connection so quickly, so deeply, and mm -hmm. that's a resource for you. But it's really important, I think, to have community. I still talk to the people I've trained with. I'm either in relatedness with them or I feel comfortable enough to say, hey, right. I'm, in a, I'm in a birth. I've tried this. I've tried that. Oh, my gosh. What do you think it is? <laughs> what can right? I do? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the beauty of it. We're always mm -hmm. going to be learning, but we always will have that community that we train with to support us and we can provide support as well. Um, I, I think that that is the key. That way you're not doing it in a black hole by yourself, right. trying to figure it out. That's right. what happened with me. Like I trained in another city um, in the, oh gosh, in the 90s. And I came back to LA and I, I just was by myself and I had to right. figure it out, figure out the business part, figure out, all the, you know, everything. It was everything. That's yeah. why I just give you guys all my stuff. I'm like, you get my contracts, you everything. get the intake form, you get everything. Because yeah. it's hard, and you can change whatever you want to about it. Because once you get it, it's your business, right? right. Um, <laughs> but just to cut some of the, I don't know, the hard hiccupy stuff out of it, yeah. you know, I just so want it to be so accessible. So hard going in. It's a little bit of a smoother. Yeah, it can be yeah. very discouraging if not. Yeah, you know, um, do me a favor, my darling. Let everybody know what your availability is and what you've got coming in the future and where they can find you. Do you have any births right now? Or are you supporting? Not. I do not. I'm actually um, wanting to reach out and I will be doing that soon to Kayla because I want to, um, if she'll have me, go to a birth with her first mm. um, and just sit and experience that with her and watch her. How she does um, it. Mm -hmm. Right, because I know that she's been doing it for a little bit longer and um, I've had a couple of setbacks. So I want to watch and see how she does. And then I do also want to connect with you later um, okay. in your way as well, since I mean, I'm right here. So Yay. And, and possibly do one with you. And I know we're supposed to talk later about mm -hmm. um, everything else that's left over with this program, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to um, get moving on this, but the best way to reach me is here on Instagram. Um, I don't have my, personal page up yet but i'm working on it so. listen listen sister let me tell you something <laughs> i have on facebook my page my and then i got a business page that i never go to because i don't have time to yeah. do all this you know these things on instagram i i just hit it and quit it i hit it it shares by itself and then i'm gone right you know I so i'm always on instagram though i'm never on facebook I'm always on Instagram. Mine just goes to Facebook. But okay. seldom do I get to the Birth Into It page. I have right. the Birth Into It page on Instagram, but I also don't have time to go there. Either. I know. I've been on there. I don't see nothing happening. I'll be like, hey, Mama hates it. Like, you know, I, 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 hit the, I hit the major seasonal times. Yeah. And I, and I show a little something on that ritual Maven one. But um, <laughs> yeah, so it really is just about people having a chance to know you learn you to see yeah. what how your energy is and um it goes a long way you know you don't have to have all the things you don't have to even have a business page if you don't want one you don't have to have a website if you don't want one like me no, I, want, you know? I want something i definitely want something that people can find me and it's not um difficult you know yeah it's, yeah you know there she is click <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's very it. helpful so yeah, you can you. be found on Instagram. You're never really on Facebook. No. <laughs> You're going to be a little bit more present and vocal on Instagram, right? I am. I am. I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I know I, you're not going to let me not be. So yes, I am. <laughs> mm -mm. They got to know that you're there and what you're offering. Yes. Um, hey, Raina. Hi, honey. Um, <laughs> so thank you so very much. And is there one last thing that you would like to share with everyone something that either means something to you is important to you or just a word of um, advice for people who are coming into birth work or who are interested in connecting a loved one with you um i think it's important to um be able to share yourself 
be able to share yourself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Share yourself because when you share yourself, it makes it easier for other people to share themselves with you. Be authentic. Be real. Be you. Oh, you just did a whole thing. A tag, a <laughs> thing, a, like a line. Like You, you need to take this off. Mama that. Hayes, that was off the cuff. That was off the cuff. Well, that, you it know. was off the cuff <laughs> in yours, Missy. You need to catch that sound bite. <laughs> right? <laughs> and that is yours. Okay, mm -hmm. my darling. Well, thank you so very much. Um, Marianne, having wonderful having you here. And I'm so glad that it's supporting your vision of jo joining the community. Thank you. Thank you. You, Thank can, you. you can reach out to Tora yes. <laughs> or myself. You. All right, you guys. <laughs> have a beautiful rest of the week. Tora, thank you, my love. Thank you, Mama Hayes. I Thank appreciate you. you. I appreciate you. Bye, darling. Bye. Everyone take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>